Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. I just got a giant load of stuff in. Just went out this morning early and did some buying. And so we've been putting all that stuff away. Check this out. Look at this giant box of keychains and some of them are vintage sports stuff. Just really cool. And a bunch of other stuff back there, some awesome games. But I have a question that just must be answered today. Matter of fact, it's a three-part question from three different people about is this all worth it and one of the people was pretty blunt about it they're like it just simply is not worth it anymore they ran through their numbers through their little bookkeeping thing and saying look this is what i'm making per hour here are the challenges another person asked the question is it worth it and showed me a little bit of their numbers then i had is it worth it for two other things and one of them is about social media and i'm going to answer that today is it worth it is doing a YouTube channel or doing social media worth it? And last but not least, is it worth it to go to highway sales? Is it worth it financially to do that? And I'm gonna tell you right now that one of my answers might surprise some of you. And somebody saw me out there and said, I bet I can get a treat and you're probably right. And you know what, I'm gonna add a fourth one to that. So it's gonna be, is it is reselling worth it anymore with all the hoops and all the expenses? It's also gonna be, is it worth it to do social media? And I'm gonna answer that one pretty honestly here today. More honest, well, not that I've ever lied, but I'm gonna be more specific about it today than I probably ever have been. I'm kind of, I forgot why I was coming back here. I'm getting this ladder. And then of course, is it worth it to go to these highway sales? And then I'm gonna add one to it. And the one I'm gonna add to it is, is it worth it to pay somebody to help you grow your reselling business? And I think this answer might surprise a lot of people too. Boy, I'm pretty clumsy with this old ladder. Some people ask me like, why do you got that old ladder? And I'm like, I don't know, I like it. I like old wooden ladders. I used to buy them all the time, sell them in my antique booth. And now we don't have that antique booth. So anyway, I'm getting this ladder for a purpose if I can ever get to it. But we're gonna answer that. Is it worth it to have an employee? Because some of you know now I do have a part-time employee. And I'm gonna talk about that today. And it's not really for eBay per se, although there's a little bit of work with that. It is mostly for some other stuff. And I'm gonna talk about that today too. Boy, that took a long time to get up here. If I was just a little bit taller, I'm not a very I wish I was a boy. Um not very tall. This rainbow bright, really, really good condition. I don't know, maybe I didn't. I can't remember where I got it. Anyway, it still sold pretty good money too. $74.95 plus shipping. Now we're gonna get to that first question first and we'll look at both of those people's comments a little bit. I like to screenshot stuff every time I see these and when I get some that align, we'll do a question. I have to fill this up on the little OCD with that stuff. But here's the Ghostbuster. It's not tall enough. I need to find something taller, but it'll have to work for now. That's the Ghostbuster popcorn bin and drink. And I've got the trap too somewhere. I don't know where I put it. But uh, I paid for the popcorn. Dave, ADH Dave does this. And I'm like, you better be right on this. So I essentially, if I sell this and there's watchers on it, I'll make all my money back I spent on that, plus the popcorn, plus the drinks that my kids shared and all that at the movie, and make a little bit of profit. I just figured we'd do it for fun. I'm gonna grab one more real quick here. It's a hat. Hats are starting to sell again, but this first person didn't really ask a question. They were just giving up and you could tell. And I felt bad for him because if you're giving up, there's no sense in sending a message to somebody other than to kind of vent a little bit. And they were running through their numbers and they're like, I've worked like a hundred hours last month and I made 900 bucks. I'm like, Phew, yeah, that's not really good. And of course, you know, it's difficult to really see when you're looking at the numbers because this other person had a similar kind of statement, but it was a question. And it was more like, what am I doing wrong kind of thing. And really the second person, and it might be true for the first person as well. Hold on. Whoa. I really need to put these down lower. Put some of the other ones up higher, I guess. But these are the lightest things. I gotta find a hat. Actually had to pull out the college hat because I thought it was a state hat, but it, it was actually a razor. It says Razorbacks on it, so it ended up getting in that one. This hat sold for fourteen dollars and twenty cents. 
Plus shipping hats are starting to go again. We've been selling a few every week, four or five. So back to the first person and they were, you know, explaining their situation, why they had decided, you know, it's just not worth it for them anymore. And I think that that is a good process to go through, you know, and they went from everything from gas to how much time they're putting into it for how much money they're getting out of it and the mess around their house and, you know, the tax situation and all those things. I think all those things are important. You know, the trajectory is their business, business growing versus shrinking. How much they enjoy it is really the big key to it. But this second person, theirs was a bit different. Y'all have to forgive me. I had to go get a soda. <laughs> Pretty much kick soda lately, but I've been burning the candle at both ends. Late night last night doing all kinds of different stuff and up at the crack of dawn making a purchase today and then back here to ship a bunch of stuff or to help ship, I should say. And then I got some friends coming over here in just a little bit and Blue Ridge mom was up there and asking me to do some things because they're having dinner over here. Anyway, that's beside the point. The second person, there was, you know, some of the same questions. And I think those are the things you got to ask yourself. That's why I think it's really important, unless you're just purely doing it for the joy of it and you're retired and you just love it. You know, if you're doing it specifically to make money, and there's other things, there's opportunity costs out there that you're sacrificing in order to do it. I think it's important that you really keep track of really how much you're making per hour. And I know when I say that, some people get mad at me and they don't like the way I figure it out and all that stuff. And that's okay. But the only point is that if you have an idea how much money you're making, I think it's important to know how much you're making because of that opportunity cost. In other words, if you could be doing something else that you also enjoy and could be making more money than you are making, you at least have to know how much money you're making compared to how much you're putting into it. That doesn't mean you got to keep spreadsheets on it and all that stuff. Just have an idea, I think, is probably good enough. But this person actually had an accounting issue. They were using one of the, I don't know, they didn't, I didn't talk about if they're using my reseller genie or if they're doing something. I don't know what they're using. But they said at the end of the month, they went and calculated their profit out. And they're like, I can't believe that I'm selling this much and making this little. And so I went over it with them just a little bit. I didn't respond for very long, just a couple of lines to get some feedback. It is kind of exactly what I thought it was. It's, they're now buying, and this is a huge big deal. You know, you can lose money in a month and still be making money. I know that seems ridiculous because I used to use a little accounting thing and it would show me, hey, you lost $600 this month. No, I didn't. I made quite a bit of money that month, but I made a massive purchase. And so the money going into the business that month I actually technically lost money. And that's what they were looking at. And they didn't understand that program. Get back to that in just a second. But that is incidentally kind of the reason why I don't buy at all for three months. Pretty much don't buy at all for maybe, let's say, December, January. In February, I start to buy just a shade depending on where I'm at and how much stuff I have, because then you can real, really recognize your profits at that point. I think it's important to have a time of year. Well, not for everybody. For me, to have a time of year where you just don't buy. And this is Axe and Smash Demolition. I think that's Axe and Smash. There's one other one. What's the other one's name? Anyway, it doesn't matter. $29.95 plus shipping. And this one went to one of my favorite people, Dan in Demand over here. What's it, what's it called now? I shouted you out the other day, and it's a different channel. Reseller Leftovers podcast. And Joe, one of my other favorite people. Joe is awesome. And Jimmy used to be one of my favorite people until he voted for Dan in the March Madness reseller bracket. Hey, Jimmy. I'm, I'm only kidding. Sort of. And he left a message. He says, hey, Kevin, I'm watching your latest video now and saw you sold some WCW figures. I did. And he said, I would have jumped on those if I noticed they were in here before I came to see those. You had demolition will do. I always wanted these as a kid, but never got them. Thank you, Dan. You'll probably read this on your show if I don't say, if I don't, but don't feel obligated. <laughs> Very good. See, that's the kind of guy he is right there, right there. Matter of fact, he's single, ladies, and I'm trying to get him hooked up with somebody. So, you know, send your applications. I'm, I'm just, just having a good time, y'all. Just having a good time. He's got his own channel as well, Dan in Demand. So thank you, Dan. We appreciate you, and I appreciate the purchase. We had another viewer purchase. Matter of fact, we had more viewer sales today than I've had in a long, long time. 
and normally like i said it hovers around 20 percent well there was a week or two where it was well under that and it wasn't that there was fewer viewer sales it was that we were selling so much more the viewer sales were pretty much the same but we were selling 20 some things a day and so the percentage went down but this one right here the purple pie man one of my favorite like villain type characters from the 80s i also liked gargamel you got any good villains from the 80s but that one was really cool. And that one sold for $16.95 plus shipping. I bet I've sold that very one five times. And this one, like I said, is going to Angela. Hi, Kevin and family. Hope all is well. You can add this one to the fake sale list. There you go. LOL. Best wishes from Angela and Rod. Lonesome Oak Pickers. I like that. Lonesome Dove is one of my favorite movies of all time. Sold a Nike running quarter zip medium. This was from the Lost and Found sale. Golf course sale. $17.95. Plus shipping i guess let me say this to sum up what i thought of those people's questions or opinions points i guess it, it really just depends on the person you know there is an opportunity cost for everybody for me i did not have the ability to make a ton of money i was basically <laughs> i basically don't have many skills you know i was a good teacher but in a system where good teachers get paid the same amount as bad teachers you know, you'd only make so much money and it just barely went up every year. So for me, it is well worth it. Well, well worth it. Without the social media and we'll answer that part of the question and man, all that stuff. It's well, well worth it. Matter of fact, it's a necessity. Necessity is the mother of invention. That's why I started doing it in the first place. So not only is it worth it, it was it was almost mandatory for me. Either that or go out and get a second job, which reminds me, because it is individual, my boy, my oldest boy, who is I'm, I'm extremely proud of. He actually, he's 21. He's graduated college. He's been working, worked his way up in a, in a company already at 21 and is now managing and is making well more than I made as a teacher. And he's talking about doing another job on the weekends. I'm like, holy moly. He's, he's bought a piece of property. He wants to build a house. He doesn't want to take out massive loans and all that stuff, which is very admirable. But when he told me about the other job, I was surprised at what a low dollar amount that other job was. I'm like, hmm. I'm like, you know, you make this much doing this and you're just going to do this on the side and make so little. Why don't you resell? I didn't say that. I didn't say that because I don't want him to feel like he needs to do what I do. But that's what I was thinking because that opportunity cost almost all and the joy you get out of something is almost always the answer to that type of question and looked at the next one i have another viewer sale this is the most we've had in a long long time i think there are six today so thank you and this one is kind of cool because it came from maya i think i pronounced that right the way that it's spelled and she i assume unless i've really butchered this so my apologies let me see if i can find it so i don't dig while you're all are just waiting here she got a golf club head cover and that can only assume that you are a golfer. And she says that she, I'm hoping I'm just gonna continue, M-I-A-H, right, Maya. So I'm gonna assume that you are a female golfer. She says she is a junior in high school from Christiansburg and she really loves watching the videos. Very cool, thank you very, very much. Little known secret, I used to be an assistant golf coach at the high school I used to work at. So. Anyway, that's going out for ten ninety five, and we appreciate you very much. I just got an alert on my phone. This it blows my mind. American Bubble Boy, Co Commonwealth. <laughs> Actually, you don't get any money back for the bubble, but you do for the tape. I ordered this thing yesterday before the close of business, like three o'clock, I think, maybe two, two ish, and it's here today. It just blows my mind. And I'm on that schedule thing. If you're not aware of that, and you go over there and buy your stuff. You can actually get it cheaper. By the way, I'm going off on a side note. Somebody sent me a message the other day about how expensive Bubble Boy was. And I said, what did you order? And they ordered one roll of bubble wrap. Listen, if you're going to order bubble wrap, order at least the quad. Because it is way cheaper. Way cheaper to get four than it is to get one. So, just because of shipping. But whatever. That's a side note. Don't even order the two. Order the four. It's super cheap. Like you get it for less than 50 bucks delivered to your house and you get four giant rolls. So, all right, there's enough of that. What was I talking about? Oh, I gotta go get the bubble wrap off the porch, but I wanted to address social media. And so I'll do this over the next few little sales here, but it's very difficult to say this. 
social media can be worth it. It really, really is worth it for me because it's worked because people are kind enough to watch this program. So I really do appreciate that. I can't answer that for everybody else. I never tell people, yes, go start a YouTube channel because I don't know if it's going to work or not. And if it doesn't work, it is definitely not worth worth your time. I know people who do it and it does work and it's still not worth their time because it's not big enough. And there'll come a day when it won't be worth it for me. And, you know, things don't last forever. And we've been growing for a long, long, long time on all these different platforms. But at some point, that will end. And then it will go down at some point. Social media will change. Something will change, right? And so you got to think that as well. You know, things won't always stay the same. They won't always stay the same for me. And someday I'll have to make that decision. But for me right now, it absolutely is worth it. I would say for the people out there, who have tried it and love it and you enjoy it so much, even if it's not financially worth it for you, then yeah, probably keep going with it. But if it isn't, maybe find your niche, find what you do enjoy inside of social media and do that and try to make it profitable or at least help the profitable sides of your business. But that is a question I really can't answer. Financially for me, absolutely 100%, it is definitely worth it. And I don't normally get into the details, but I saw a post the other day with somebody who, somebody had posted their social media things and their earnings, and they're like, you put in all that work and that's all you get paid? You know, but it is something that could scale. I used to do this before I was monetized. At that point, was it worth it? No, I was betting on the future. And so that's where I can't really give folks advice because I don't know the future and I don't know social media. I don't know what works. I don't even know what works for me and what doesn't work for me other than the fact that you guys somehow enjoy whatever it is we do. And I really do appreciate that. I'm not going to go over that whole list I went over before, but reselling on eBay is still our number one moneymaker. If you take all the different platforms and channels that we do social media on. If you put them all together, they make more than the reselling part of the business, but it goes eBay first. And then really if the next one is the Commonwealth Picker channel, this one makes far less than that. But you know, we post everywhere. I don't think people realize the time involved. And when I, when I talk about hiring somebody in a minute, if I didn't have social media, I wouldn't hire a soul. No chance, wouldn't need to. It's the social media that takes up a massive amount of time. Like here, here's an example. I've been doing three videos a week. I used to do five videos a week and we'd have eight to 10 sales a day and I'd do every day of the week and I'd do a video. That's how we started off on this channel. But I was working. Now I'm full time, well, full time. I'm not working, let's say that. And so we're selling way, way, way more, right? Viewer sales, we're just selling more in general because I have more time to do it. And so I had since cut down to three videos and that's what we've been doing, but not this video, but the other videos for the last few weeks, we've been selling 25 things a day and putting them in these videos, 30 things in a video, and I don't get to talk about the topics that I want to talk about. So I'm seriously considering going back to four videos a week, which is actually what I'm doing right now. This is the third day in a row we shipped. We shipped 20, 25 things, 22 or 22 things, 25 things. And I think we have like 15, 16 things today, three straight days. So, and then I'm going to ship tomorrow. So now we're up to four videos, but just to give you a little picture of the time involved, if I were to just come in here and pick these 15, 16 things today, I would just go get them, put them here, package them up, ship them out. It'd take me less than an hour. Well, less than an hour, more than likely this stuff's pretty easy. But doing the filming, the planning, looking at the screenshots, going over what I want to talk about and all that stuff and yapping like I'm doing right now, all of that stuff, and then the editing, and then the posting, and then the thumbnail, and then the title, and the reactions to the videos, all that stuff, that adds two and a half to four and a half hours, depending on the length of the video, the topic of the video, to what I do every day. So is that worth it to you? Man, think about how much that takes away from your reselling business. So for most people, the answer is probably no, it's not worth it. All right, Turner's got some Commonwealth comedy, but I think there was a pepper and now there's a wallet because I heard a light one. Now I heard a heavy one. Turner's got a baseball joke for you because his baseball season is ramping up right now. We're excited about it. You already won a ring, didn't you, bud? All right, what's your joke? What's a baseball player's least favorite 
um, Star Wars movie. What's a baseball player's least favorite Star Wars movie? I don't know what. The Umpire Strikes Back. The Umpire Strikes Back. I like it, buddy. Thank you. Bye. Let me grab the next item, but let me know about the first question. Do you ever wonder if it's worth it to you anymore? Do you ever want to quit? What are the emotions? What are the thoughts that go through your head? Have any of you out there quit because it wasn't worth it, but you still watch the show for some reason? And have any of you started social media? Hey, if you want to, share your channel down below. Maybe it'll, it'll help out a little bit. Um, but I know a lot of folks who have started up and stopped because they've just decided it really isn't worth it. There's a lot of work that goes into it. And we're, you know, we're running 18 million different platforms. I mean, there are between shorts, long form, medium form on all platforms. We put out like 40 to 50 things a week across Facebook and across YouTube, multiple YouTube channels, Garage Sale Nation, Garage, uh, what else? Garage Sale Nation Facebook group, Trash to Cash Podcast, Trash to Cash Facebook group. I'll let you look at this while I yap on and on about social media. TikTok, I mean, come on flipper, come on picker, all this stuff. This isn't even in very good condition. And it's still sold for $29.95 plus shipping. You find the old Cadillac stuff. It will sell. I bought this for five bucks at a sale. Everything was overpriced at that sale. Overpriced for me. Don't get mad at me. But I still found one thing. Five bucks into $29.95 plus shipping. And you know what? Some people just have fun doing it here. I mean, these guys have this podcast. Now, I'm sure it'll be monetized at some point, but I don't think it is right now. And, you know, they're having a good time. So there's something to be said for that as well. I mean, I subject myself to Dave and Carrie. I sold a medium. I hope it'll look. We only have one of these left, maybe. Man, that's awesome. Been a long time, but this is only going out the door. It's 30% off now, so it's only going out the door for about 14 free ship. This leads to the next question, which is, are highway sales worth it? So I would say reselling is absolutely worth it to me. It's worth it, worth it to most of you, but it really is a personal kind of decision for sure. Social media is worth it to me. It may not be worth it to everybody. Um, but highway sales, I've got a little stronger opinion on this. So I love highway sales. I just enjoy the heck out of them. It's just fun. I don't know. There's just something about the atmosphere. You don't have to look up stuff and run all over the place and wherever. You just go on one road and you, you know, you don't find as much necessarily as you might in a community sale or something like that. But there's something about seeing a place you've never been to before. Or maybe you have, but you enjoyed going back. And I've seen so many parts of this country. I love them. I love seeing my friends at those highway sales. I've been to, you know, I've been to, to some sales with Jimmy here. And we go with Mike and Dave and Carrie and Rod and Don and who I, Eric, OBX Picker and Chernock and Lee. All those guys that I just really, really enjoy picking with. However, financially, if... I depended on every dime I do for reselling. I probably wouldn't go. I don't think financially. As a matter of fact, I've said this before. And there's this there's not great picking around my area. In the right times of year, there's some good picking. But there's not great picking. And anybody, Jimmy's been here, he's like, what in the world? <laughs> he's like, how do you do it here, right? But at times, it is good, right? I would probably go to Raleigh. And I would go to community sales in Raleigh and I would make far, far more money than driving to some highway sale and getting an Airbnb and doing all that stuff. Financially, I don't think it's the best thing for most folks to do. So no, I don't think highway sales are worth it. However, I have been to some highway sales, like the one in Tennessee, the, the 127. The last time I went wasn't great. I mean, we did good, but it wasn't like... Wow, paid for my trip and made $8,000 more. The one before it was amazing because I came across that vintage clothing buy. But that's like, you got to get lucky, right? I think that's a big part of it. Where you go and what you come across really makes the whole difference. I just love it so much. And I went to Peaches this year and we're going to go to some different ones this year as well. So if you are a highway seller... First of all, go check out Garage Sale Nation over there on Facebook, which is our Facebook group all dedicated to highway sales. Do you go because it's fun or do you beco go because that's where the money is? I'm curious because I think you're better off, most people are better off just going to certain areas that aren't even highway sales 
and hitting up the community sales and things like that. So tell me what you think of highway sales down below. Talking about is it worth it to resell? You know, if you're going to highway sales and you're paying for gas, the, the way gas is so expensive these days, you're paying for, you know, a hotel or Airbnb and you're doing all that, boy, you better find stuff or you, you might lose money on that trip. But usually I've never, I've never lost money on a trip, but unless I go to Dave and Carry and I'm not going to pay for everything, but you know what I mean. Pile microphone. I shouldn't say that. That that used to be the case. Not so much anymore. $24.95. Plus shipping. One good strategy, though, is when we go now, we just get one giant place and we just split the bill up. Except for I don't think I paid Mike this time. PlayStation 2 game, 24 The game. Another viewer sale, y'all. There are a bunch today. I think we got a couple more to come still, so thank you. 24 PlayStation, the game, $10. And this one went to Joseph. Kevin, love the channel. Me and my wife also resell. We have gotten a lot of useful information from you. Appreciate that. Thanks for the good content. My eBay is Chef Joe. The period is on purpose. Chef dot Joe. Awesome. Thank you, and thank you for the purchase. Hope you enjoy the game. This one sold so fast, we didn't even get it in the other shed. I knew it would. And it did go to a viewer, but it was going to sell. There's no doubt. I had an offer on it like 10 minutes after it was listed. So if I can find it. All right. It is. Let me just put it right in here. And it sold super quick. This is a game. I picked it up at a doll, for a dollar to sell. You're going to see it on the Picker channel soon. And it was at this guy's sale that we just happened across while I was driving Turner down to his game, to his baseball game in Martinsville, Virginia. And I'm like, I hope that thing is new. And it is. And so before I listed it, there were a couple of comps, but they were both used comps. I think one was for nine and one was for like 12 or 16. I can't remember. But this thing had the box and was in perfect condition. So I put it out there for $24.95. Immediate followers, one offer, and a viewer bought it. And it sold to Juanita, and she said she enjoys the program. So thank you. Appreciate that very much. $24.00. 95 cents plus shipping i probably could put it out there for more and got a sale but i figured that was pretty good a dollar into 25 bucks plus shipping get to the last question here in just a second but i think this one's a viewer sale the next one isn't and these have been selling good lately again and it is the nwo headbands i gotta get the right one there's two that look the same but this is the one that we had the most of but it sells pretty much better than anything else i guess the plain WCW NWO school cap, $9.95 free shipping. We're overwhelmed, like 40% of the sales today, so maybe more, 45%. That hadn't happened in a long time, so thank you very, very much. Absolutely love your videos and all the information you put out. My favorite YouTube reseller and your videos have helped me out with so many things in my early days of reselling and now even making videos myself. See, there we talked about it. I'll be wearing this when I'm out on my motorcycle under my helmet, thanks again, Murray AKL, the resale redneck on YouTube and eBay. So thank you. Appreciate that. And I'll have to go check you out. That reminds me of a question I got from my buddy, Matt, ABC Matt. Go check out his YouTube channel. He doesn't know I'm reading this. I don't think he'll mind. I'll maybe kind of summarize it as opposed to read it and take out all the names as to not incriminate the innocent. <laughs> any rate he said this leads to the question about an employee and this is my explanation for it but he says i have a debate with someone about this reseller versus social media influencer um or you know social media person whatever you want to call it i feel if you're very successful on what not or dibbed it your buyer is wider you have more options you can buy things you normally wouldn't buy because you can sell them on those platforms as opposed to eBay. You don't have to be concerned about the sell-through rate, etc., etc. So I'm summarizing just a little bit. With that said, because your buying thought process is different because you can utilize a platform like whatnot or Divdit, I feel you are swaying towards social media influencer. Okay, so and he wasn't directing that at me. He was just having a debate with somebody. So I'm just going to say this. My response to him was this. For me, it's not an either or kind of thing. It's a both kind of thing. So in other words, and you'll see this when, when I do this, when I'm out picking, as opposed to some other folks, you know, I'm still pretty darn focused on eBay because that's what I want to do. It's what I absolutely love. But at the same time, 
I'm now doing a little bit of whatnot. So you'll see specifically in my video, I'll even say it. Like, I would pick this up because of whatnot, because I have an audience on whatnot, right? And I wouldn't pick it up for eBay, for instance, or you get a whole lot of something that might be tedious to go through on eBay, but it's not tedious on whatnot. It definitely does change the way you buy. I have been reluctant to change the way I buy because I find that I still find stuff. What I would really like to do is sell awesome, cool stuff on both platforms. But the reality is just about the time we talked about earlier, there just simply isn't enough time in the day to do it. So I made a conscious decision. Let me get back to that for just a second. It I don't like the idea that you are either a reseller or you do social media. I think that's ridiculous. It just You can be both. Now, you might be a reseller who depends on your social media to sell on a live platform. But that doesn't make you not a reseller. It just makes you a different type of reseller. I decided I wanted to continue to do eBay the way I've done it for 22 years. And that that part of the business was where I would hire the employee. A, because I don't love it as much as I love this. I think that's the biggest part of it. But going back to that question, I've kind of changed my thought process on this over the years. If you've been following me for a while, you've noticed this. I went on Whatnot the other day. I don't watch a lot of shows. I don't like the experiential buying process, to be perfectly honest with you. I, it's just not me. A lot of people do. I just I don't enjoy it. I do. I like to see my friends on there and talk to them and stuff and buy from people who have supported me over the years as well. I, I often do that. So I went on there and I just went on to the app, not with no purpose other than to look at the most popular shows on whatnot. And I scrolled through, I don't even know how many, probably 40 shows, 40 shows over there. I didn't know one person in the top 40. Not one social media influencer, not one creator. The top 40 shows had nobody in there like that. Now, in the reselling space, you know, a lot of those people um, are, are really not resellers in the sense that we do reselling. They do, they, they basically, they get massive quantities of stuff at really, really cheap prices. And they're able to create a show, entertaining, quick, because they get so much of the exact same kind of stuff and they're searching it out, they're buying it in quantity. Clothes, for instance. Most of these shows I was watching were just doing tons and tons of brand new clothing. And I think that was probably 30% of the shows that I was looking at that were being watched the most. And they were doing 10 second auctions. Bam, sold, 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 sold. It was flying. I mean, they would show you the item and like throw it. And it was still running because it was a 10 second drop dead thing. I know, some of you probably don't care about this, but I just wanted to make the point that I think more and more and more. Yeah, there's a lot of social media influence people who were who were used, not in a negative way, to bring people to that platform because we're resellers. Right. But now I think it's it's being it's becoming something quite a bit different than it was um, when it started. And I think that people are finding it to be another avenue to resell. I know so many people who have quit selling on eBay to sell over there. I also know a lot of people who wanted to try to sell over there and couldn't. And it was really, really a struggle and not fun. And they said, forget it. And they went back over here. And I, I totally get it. So to answer the last question, hopefully that answered your question, Matt. But to me, it's not a either or. Here's my definition of a reseller. Somebody who resells something. Nothing else matters. If they do it with social media, don't do it with social media. If they're a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, you know, a garbage truck driver, a policeman, doesn't matter. If you resell something, you're a reseller. Bought this from one of my friends at the flea market the other day. Didn't really want to buy it, but he really wanted to sell something. And I figured I could buy it off of him and give him a decent amount of money. I paid him 10, only sold it for 20. But hey, he got a sale and I made a little bit of money too. It's a VT number three Nike jersey not embroidered which is why i was a little reluctant to buy it but still happy to do it that little issue so 10 into 20 plus shipping not great but i'll take it all right as far as hiring an employee here's the deal so i think it's different for all kinds of different people i remember craigslist hunter talking about this many moons ago and of course he does he's got a brick and mortar for goodness sake you got to have employees you just if you own a brick and mortar you know what i'm talking about i would resist it completely as much as you possibly can 
and never do it unless the opportunity really strikes where you just have to have it because there's a lot of stress that goes with it with you when you have you know i have a bunch of people on my payroll almost all of them for social media i have two people help me with editing not for this channel but for the picker channel and for all the facebook stuff and and all that i have two um, you know, I've got an accountant now and a bookkeeper and all the stuff that goes with all that, right? And then we pay Jess and pay Bubba's girlfriend a little bit as well from time to time. And they are taking care. Matter of fact, at the end of this video, you're going to see what they do for me. And the bulk of it has been whatnot and now on Dibdit, Dibdit.com. So, and you'll see just a minute what I'm talking about. There just simply isn't enough time in the day. And since... I love reselling and especially on eBay and Mercari and all the other stuff. I wanted to keep that. I wanted to carve that out for myself because I love it so much. And so everybody I've paid, and I don't, I'm not talking about full-time people here. Don't get me wrong. Just to give you the picture here. I'm not like, I'm not like I've got a $50,000 payroll or something. That's not the case. But I pay people to help me do the things that I can't keep up with so that I can do the things that I love. What I was doing before I had any of that, just say a year and a half ago, a year ago, was taking me 70 hours a week, 80 hours a week. And then we would expand. And when we decided we were going to expand on whatnot, I told my family, we can do that, but I can't do it. And I don't want to do it because I would lose this. And this is what I love. I love this building. I love when the cha-ching happens. I'm an eBay reseller. I probably always will be. It's just in my heart. So when we expand it into that, it's a different kind of a feel, a different kind of a business. So in my mind, it's two businesses. And I have employees for that business is essentially the way I see it. And my margins are, are cut in half. My profit margins are cut in half because I don't do that work. I don't do the whatnot work. I don't do the what the dibbed it work. I do it on the show. I host the show. But that's all I do. I buy the stuff. I host the show, but I don't list the stuff. I don't ship the stuff. And my dad takes it to the post office. So in general, an employee for reselling, boy, I would resist it. Let me know. Does anybody else out, out there have one who, who helps them with their, with their reselling business? I'm curious. Or maybe it's bits and pieces that you don't like to do. Maybe it's your kids and not in a negative way. But I, you know, I used to have my kids clean stuff for me. They didn't really like it, but they did it. Now I pay Turner to make his jokes, dollar to save, dollar to spend, dollar to donate. <laughs> and Reagan helps with CommonwealthPicker.com, and, and she does other things like that. And she'll help me when I have little projects or new shirts come in to fold, or she does odds and ends and fun stuff like that. Matter of fact, I gotta go get her. But at any rate, I've been pretty open on this video. I really appreciate you guys out there. I appreciate your questions. I like honest questions and where I can give feedback instead of just attacks. And everybody doesn't have to like me, but I try to be honest about it. And I am curious if you have an employee out there. I'm curious if you think it's worth it, if you would resist it, because I think it's a wise thing to do as best you can. Not to mention you have the added stress of wanting to make sure everything's running good because those people depend on money too, right? Hey, all Reagan has a sale on Come on, figure out come on, you get it. Virginia got a trash cash Ikea bag. Yep, Virginia got an Ikea bag and we're all down to like four left over there. Yep. So thank you, Reagan. Appreciate it. Bye, and don't forget to get your sticker at CommonwealthPicker.com. Hey, real quick. We don't have them yet, but by the time they see this video, the Q2 Enema Man sticker mm -hmm. is going to be out. And we'll show it to you probably next episode. Thanks. Bye. Hey, y'all. I got to cut this in the video. I just got done recording Trash to Cash podcast, and I was looking at my screens and talking about things that sold and stuff like that, and I realized I forgot something. And it is another one of those rescuers. I don't think this one went to you. Or the next one on tomorrow's or two days from now's episode I did, but it's this rescuers ornament, and they're selling for about $14. Free ship. So having employees is an added level of stress that... Uh, you know, most people don't want, I certainly don't want, and I probably won't forever either, but I don't know. I'm talking off the top of my head at this point. Maybe I ought to be careful what I say, but that's the way it's set up for me. 
Um, let me know if you ever get down about your reselling and think, is it worth it? Let me know if you're absolutely sure it's worth it for you and tell me why down in the comments below. And let's do this too. We haven't done it in a while and spring has sprung. What is the best thing you found this week? A couple people put some interesting ones in the last time that made me think a little bit. I love doing that and learning from you guys. So I appreciate it. And I can't wait to see you next time. I'm sure the girls don't want to be on camera, but I told you. But I don't ship whatnot, and I don't ship did it. But I thought I'd show you the process at least. What do you think? Look, Dave, she knows how to use a tape gun. She's only been doing this for a couple of weeks. Who's that? <laughs> Who's that? That's a lot of stuff, y'all. Whew.